Hi, this is Spencer J, and I'm here with Ellen from Palehound. Have you played in San Luis Obispo before? Definitely not. Never been here. <laughs> Never been anywhere near here, I don't think. Besides, I guess LA is kind of near here. Could you give a little bit of um, an idea of what the set for tonight's going to sound like? Yeah, we've been playing a pretty similar set throughout this tour, which is that we kind of try to start off really like loud and heavy and then kind of go down to some like quieter songs and kind of like have a little bit of a lull in the middle and try to end with a bang. Um, been trying to like, cause usually we kind of end with the with the sadder stuff, but we've been kind of trying to shuffle it around recently. Nice. But uh, yeah, it'll it'll be interesting, I think for sure. So Palehound's been around since 2013. Mm -hmm. So how did you first get introduced to music, and what pushed you to create your own? Um, well, what first pushed me to music, I was started playing guitar when I was like seven or eight years old, cause my dad played guitar. Not, pro, not he was never a professional musician, but I grew up with him like playing in bands and stuff. Um, and so he gave me some guitar lessons, and he wrote some songs. So I kind of started wanting to write some songs, and I didn't really like have a like a thing that I felt was like my thing. Like all my friends were on like sports teams and stuff, and then I finally found my thing. So yeah. Has growing up in Boston contributed or influenced your music in any way? Actually, I have only lived in Boston for three years. I always say I'm from Boston, but I'm actually from Connecticut. Um, and that definitely influenced my music because I was so isolated. Like where I was, there was like very little uh, music scene at all. So I kind of was like had to fend for myself and like do the discovering for myself and, and like kind of formulate my sound without like any other influences really because there was like not really many other people around besides like people who played in the school orchestra and stuff <laughs> so well, what was the local diy scene in boston like oh it's so good i love the local scene in boston um i moved to boston with this expectation everyone in the northeast so, likes to complain about the boston scene and say that it's like dead and everyone moved to philly and all this stuff and it's all just like totally not true and i was like got there and was so pleasantly surprised at how like how much the scene is just like thriving and it's really like as a queer person it's been like a really good scene for me like there's a lot of like queer punk and stuff and it's very like accepting of as, as a scene of that stuff so that's really important to me what would you consider to be your most serendipitous show you've ever played oh my gosh serendipitous there are, you know what we've had a really good year where i feel like there are a few shows that I would say um but like we played with Mitski the other night at the Fonda in LA and that was totally serendipitous because I mean not not the most serendipitous I can't really name one but like we had toured with Mitski well me and Jesse our drummer Lars our bassist is new but we had toured with Mitski like two years ago playing like really small clubs uh she was headlining of course and uh just playing really small clubs and like they most of the time like didn't really sell out but like she's such a force and I just remember the whole time being like she's gonna be huge like she's gonna be the next big thing like I can't wait to see her soar and then like two years later we're playing this like huge venue in LA and like she's like, got fans waiting outside after the show like trying to get us like get her to sign stuff it's like it was just great to like I don't know watch someone like Mitski who's worked really hard like get to this place and then get to kind of go there with her which yeah, is definitely. really awesome could you describe what the transition has been like from playing shows in Boston to touring across the US so different so so different I mean in Boston we started by playing like some house shows recently we've been playing mainly just venue shows but like I go to like as many house shows as I can get to <laughs> I'm kind of lazy so that's not like a lot <laughs> but um yeah and then like we just like kind of our tour started in like the Midwest so it was kind of like driving through corn every day and then going to these like being like what even is here and then finding yourself in this like tiny little city like Des Moines Iowa or something and then playing for people there and it's been really interesting because like like I said Boston has like this really like thriving queer scene and like so when we go on tour I'm never really sure what to expect from the crowd like if it's going to be like cool with that and then recently on this tour it's been really awesome like we've been having like the freaks kind of coming from the from the bottom to the surface of these places and coming to the shows and it's been really nice nice so your most recently release has been A Place I'll Always Go. Mm -hmm. Have your most recent shows been focused around this album? Uh, yeah, definitely. Because, um, I don't know, we'd been playing, like, when we put out Dry Food, we put out Dry Food, like, a year after the songs were written. So we'd been touring on those songs for so long, even before the record came out. So as soon as we had the opportunity to perform new songs, like, we jumped at it. 
So I'd say like we play almost the whole record every night. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I, I've been researching your guys' reviews on this album so far, and for the most part, they say that the album's dealing with your experiences with pain and loss and how to evolve past these experiences. Would you consider music to be like a form of therapy for you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And how so? Um, it just, I feel like there's like, I write to kind of silence a lot of the noise in my head and kind of try to find one voice among all of the voices. Um and yeah, that's just how I've always done. That's why I've always done music because I'm just like an anxious freak and I'm really sensitive and kind of get really depressed. And it's just nice to like pick one channel out of all of those and just like turn it into something productive. Yeah. Thank you so much for having you. me in the studio. Yeah. I think we're gonna wrap up, wrap it up. Um, could you describe one last time what your show is gonna be like tonight and where it's gonna be held? Uh, it's going to be at the Fremont Theater. Is that how you say it? Fremont, not Fremont. Okay. Fremont Theater. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, yeah, I, I feel like this is like a crowd with M word that we've like never played for. Um, like it's not like a bunch of like freak queer punks like we're used to. And so you'll see me a little nervous. It'll definitely be a big audience. But, you know, we spend out of 24 hours of a day that we spend on tour, we only have 45 minutes to play music. So we get really excited about it. So, yeah. Thank you. That's all the time we have. We're getting back to the music. This is KCPR, Cal Poly Radio.